Hello everybody. This is the first part of um, a series with lessons of the practical use uh, for the Highland Broadsword and Touch. The broadsword is, as you all already know, a cut and thrust weapon with a very good basket hilt to protect the hand and a broad flat blade to cut. You can also thrust, as we will see later, but it's mainly made for cutting. The blade can be double-edged or single-edged and there are also curved examples. This is of course not a real broadsword, this is a black fencer training broadsword of some synthetic material but with a good um, steel basket hilt, uh, which is really a good training weapon in, in our opinion, um, not only because it's affordable compared to a steel sword, but it's also pretty realistic in weight and balance. But if you want to know more about that, there are several reviews about Black Fencer weapons out there. Uh, this video is not about that, just for your information. The second tool we will need is this. This is a touch. It's a round shield. This is the training touch, so it's not so fancy and beautiful like uh, real touches are. It's also not covered with leather, it's just covered with tape, but it's real wood. And as you can see, I hold it here on my forearm with two uh, leather straps so I can hold it very good and it's a pretty simple shield. The historical tarts were much more decorated with all these brass nails and mostly had a, an ambu here in the middle, a small ambu, not as big as on Viking shields or similar shields, um, but they had a small ambu. We think that this combination Brussels and Taj was the preferred combination of the Highland clan warriors um, who could afford a sword, of course. The Highlanders also used the single broadsword, of course, but the preferred combination was broadsword and Taj, especially in battle. Um, so, when we talk about the fighting style of the Highlanders, I would think first, before everything else, um, about this combination, broadsword and touch. This is a practical guide to the use of this combination. So it is not a step-by-step -step, uh, analysis of uh, a specific source, but it is more like, you know, the practical interpretation we use in our training um, and in our um, sparring bouts when we use broadsword and touch. So what sources do we use? First of all, it is good before you use broadsword and touch, it is really good to have a good base with the single broadsword. Um, just because the regimental uh, manuals we use, like uh, Sinclair, Matthewson, Angelo uh, and so on, um, they give you a really, really good um, sense for footwork, for distance, timing and all the things you need. And of course, especially beginners are not so overwhelmed by using two tools at the same time, um, but first using only one tool. So with the single broadsword, you, you learn all the basics you need later for broadsword and touch tools. So the most important manual we use is um, Tom's page, not only for the single broadsword, but especially for broadsword and touch. Although there is not so much information on broadsword and touch, it gives you enough um, to have an idea how to use it, especially when you trained with a single broadsword before and especially when you trained um, the single broadsword as Thomas Page teaches it in his manual. The second source we use, um, which also contains little information um, about the broadsword and touch and also many other weapon combinations and also about the single broadsword or backsword, is Donald McBain, uh, who gives also an interesting account um, how to use the most important points, how to use a broadsword and a touch together. Finally, we also um, use some pictures, like um, the famous uh, Pennycrick sketches. Um, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. Sorry about that. Um, these sketches were done um, around the last Jacobite Rising, around the Battle of Cologne, you know, Bonnie Prince Charlie and all this stuff. You can have a lot of good videos um, on YouTube about this battle and about the last Jacobit Rising. These sketches show many um, Highlanders, uh, Jacobite Highlanders, 
fighting with broadsword and touch. And interestingly, there are many um, fighters uh, shown with uh, the broadsword in the right hand and the touch in the left hand, but also the other way around. So we have many left-handers with broadsword and touch. So what we will present you in the following lessons um, are um, some practical tips how to use broadsword and touch. You can start with it when you never did any broadsword before or any other single-handed weapon or any weapon combat. You can start with it. It's a practical guide, as I said before, but it's better to have a little base at least. So um, I would suggest um, that you follow these instructions very carefully. Um, you take care of yourself, you take care of your uh, training partners.